Following not having done a monthly reset last month, and now my Discord server being like, Viva la disorganization and chaos and all of that, I figured it was imperative that we do a yearly reset. So that is what we are doing today, getting ourselves cool, calm and collected for the year ahead. Typically we would start with a declutter, but one of the things that Vogel and I like to do every December is declutter, and we kind of do it together, and we do it over a couple of days, usually around Boxing Day and the few days that follow that. So instead of starting with organization declutter in that sense or our kind of physical space reset we are going to start with our personal reset resetting me because my hair is gross and i really need to dye it so that is what we're going to start with i just kind of figured it would be nice going into the new year feeling pretty and fresh and dyeing my hair is a good way to do that because right now we're working with well first of all we're working with gross but like this is a different color to this is a different color to my roots so yet yeah, not really the business not really the look i'm going for so we're gonna fix that now for this we will need our scotty hair dyeing top and our scotty hair dyeing towel we'll also need hair dye we're going with this one because i like the color and it works of course, you do not need to include hair dyeing in your yearly reset. It is not a necessary stage. It's just something that I like to do. Remember the idea of Cool Calm Collected. I'm also getting that kind of clean slate feeling and having my hair dyed gives me that kind of a vibe. So that makes it kind of a more important part in my personal process. Of course, whenever I dye my hair, I make a complete mess of my face. So we have to clean that up. But now I have my hair and mostly clean face we need to let this process and we've got about a 30 minute wait but when my hair is like this because it's like danger zone all right i don't want to end up like knocking into something or like have my hair fall out of my bun and then get dye on things so the tasks that i typically do when i'm waiting for my hair to process are usually like pretty chill like computer administration that kind of stuff so let's go zero my email inbox because it is in a state it had been such a while since I did my inbox zero that I'd gotten over 130 emails in my like just regular inbox, which for me is quite a lot. I know that other people do sometimes have quite a few more, but I like mine to be the smallest number possible. So things are away into the folders they need to be in. Any emails that need to get turned into actions can be added to something like a brain dump. They can get sorted into folders, added to the calendar, all that kind of stuff. It might be a little bit hard to see here because I've had to blur some of the footage, but there was one particular email in my inbox that any time I opened it, it would crash my Outlook app. So that kind of made the process take a little bit longer, but it wasn't so bad because we did have to wait that 30 minutes for my hair to develop. I may or may not have gotten distracted and left my hair to develop for like an hour, so hopefully it doesn't all fall out. Let's go have a shower. To really bring in the resetting vibes, we will of course be doing our face mask using the same stuff as usual because I still have it. Uh, we won't be doing the hair mask today just because, you know, we're dyeing our hair and I don't know how it would react. I mean, I don't think it'd be bad, but just in case. I know you're supposed to like wear gloves and stuff when you do this so that you don't get your fingernails all mm, dyed, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to dye my fingernails and deal with it. Progress shot and then getting out of the shower, putting on our nice moisturizers, combing my hair out. I'm just going to let it air dry because I don't really need to do anything with it. For now though, I don't actually have the rest of the reset sorted, so we need to write a list. The yearly reset is effectively like the monthly reset, just bigger. So doing this initial brainstorm was really helpful to make sure that I wasn't missing out any area of my life that I might need a bit of a reset or a review of. While our monthly reset usually focuses on things like my office space, my personal self-care, a digital reset, a financial review, and then populating my planners and doing goal setting and stuff. The yearly reset also expands this to things like other areas of my house, so a very big kind of reset in my physical space. Checking in with my partner Vogel, doing a kind of quote reset with him. So things like reviewing our goals for the year ahead, talking about any house projects we want to do, those kind of things. Because it's the end of the year, it's also an opportunity for things like a mental reset. So reviewing or reflecting on the year past. And in terms of that goal setting stuff, which is typical to the monthly reset, we're doing that but a lot more in depth because it's for the year ahead. The new year is a really good milestone moment for setting new goals and making intentions for ourselves. It's also a time where a lot of us are a lot more motivated. So I really like to lean into that as part of the reset process. So here is my initial brainstorm. We now need to take these ideas and actually turn them into an actionable list. So effectively a sequence of steps that I can take to get all of this stuff done. 
Starting with the brainstorm is good though because it gets everything out on the paper. It means that I'm not gonna, in theory, miss anything in my resetting. I can of course add to the brainstorm as I make the sequenced list, but just having that initial one down makes me feel much better. In writing the list of steps down, I am not only trying to sequence them in an order that kind of makes sense, but I'm also just trying to group them into relevant sections. That's not necessarily to say that these things are going to be completed in this order. In fact, they certainly did not end up completed in that order, but it just helps me figure out what needs to be done where effectively. The list on the left hand side is from me personally, so things that I can do by myself, while the list on the right hand side are things that I was going to do with Vogel. As mentioned, these things did not get completed in order, but in terms of actually showing them to you, I am going to show them to you in sections. Notably, one of the tasks on the list is going to be put on the washing because I've run out of clean underwear. Ew. As my physical self-care reset is now done, a couple of these I completed off camera, we can move on to my mental self-care reset. So things like doing a brain dump, reflecting on the year that was, and setting some intentions for the year coming. Essentially, we're going to be setting some goals. Something that I find difficult about doing any kind of reset task is having other thoughts kind of cluttering up my mind while I'm trying to do different stages of the reset. This is why I pretty much always like to start or have some kind of initial step be brain dumping or just getting all of my thoughts out onto paper. This means that they're in a safe space, I'm not worried about forgetting them, so thus not having them kind of go over and over on repeat in my mind, distracting me from other stuff. If they're down on the list, it means I know that they are safely stored and I can come back to them when I need to. Doing this at the start of my reset just means that I can move forward into future steps with a little bit more mental clarity. As said, I can focus on the tasks at hand. And when I come to the journal population stages of my reset, I can come back to this brain dump and pull out all of the necessary information. So I have a full page written down in terms of my brain dump so far. And this page is blank, so I can continue on if I need to, but I'm feeling pretty good about the amount we have on here at the moment, which means I can probably get into the next stage. I'll be coming back to this brain dump throughout the reset though to add things to it because there's a lot going on up here and there's gonna be more as we do other parts of the reset. For this mental self-care slash mental reset stage, other parts could include things like reflecting on the year that passed, setting intentions for the year ahead or goal setting. My goal setting process is an in-depth one, so we already have a separate video for that on the channel. That one, along with any other video related to this one, can be found linked in the description box below. Now as we have intentions and goals set up for 2023 though, it's time to start looking at other places we can reset. In particular, my digital spaces are what we're going to do next. By this point in the reset, more emails had come in, so I started off this section with a re-inbox zero to get myself back to that clean slate. I have a space in my email inbox, which is just a folder of things to action. So I'm also going to have to go through that and pull out all of the kind of like tasks, events, appointments, whatever else needs to come out of that folder, because right now it's just sitting there kind of out of sight, out of mind, which isn't necessarily the best way to deal with excess emails. <laughs> As part of the digital reset, I'm also going through my computer and tidying up any folder entropy. By folder entropy, I effectively mean disorder within my folders in my computer. So things that are on the desktop, which really belong somewhere else. Things that are sitting in the downloads folder that need to come out of there. Effectively just things that need to be put away properly. Because this is the yearly reset, I'm doing a very thorough job of this. So going through all of my folders, I'm also making sure to delete any files or folders that aren't necessary anymore. Things like backup files for stuff that doesn't need a backup anymore. Things that I have stored on my computer that could realistically get stored somewhere else. For instance, external hard drives and whatnot. Essentially all of these things that just make my computer a not as easy to use place as it could be. What I'm also going to do as part of my digital reset that I don't often do, like I don't really do it as part of my monthlies, is do a reset of my phone. So going through my photos, deleting anything in there that's just like, you know, snapshot of something that I don't need anymore, or maybe an accidental screenshot, which I do so often. Also going through my media subscriptions. So am I following people on Instagram that either aren't posting anymore or I don't really need to see anymore? Is there anybody on YouTube that I'm subscribed to that realistically I don't watch their content anymore and don't need to be subscribed anymore? What are you doing? Don't hit unsubscribe. <laughs> 
Now it's time to do my budget reset review kind of a thing. It's not so much a reset, but anywho. So this is populating the budget so that then I know what we've spent money on and all of that kind of stuff. Reviewing our spending areas and then setting kind of some goals for the year ahead. I haven't populated the budget in like a month, so this is going to take a little bit of time, but that's okay. Put on some music and get it done. For my budgeting, I'm using the spending tracker that is available over on my shop. There's a link to that in the description box below, but it's just a really simple system where I log the daily expenses we've got, putting them into different categories so I know what money is getting spent where, and then on the overview tab, it tells me what money has been spent total in each of those categories. The categories are fully customizable, you can set them up to suit how you spend your money, but the categories we use are grocery, home and household, fuel, expected bills, unexpected bills, personal and well-being, food out, entertainment, transport, travel, gifts, business expenses, and income. On the actual daily tracking side of it, there's a space to put in the date that the spending happened, write a comment about what that spending was on just for a little extra information, then we have the category column and the amount column. Populating that took pretty much as long as I thought it was going to, which was not a short amount of time, but it was a good opportunity to listen to some tunes, so it's all good. It's all populated now, so we have our official totals for December, and kind of for the year, we didn't actually start properly tracking stuff until about July, so I don't actually have data from the first half of the year, but we'll have a look at the totals and do some comparisons between July to December. A couple points before we get into it, this is spending for a two-person household, so Vogel and I, except for December where we had guests and then there's probably a little more spending in certain areas because of that. These numbers are in New Zealand dollars and yeah, let's just have a look. Working from top to bottom, our first category is groceries, which came in at about $1,100, which is a bit higher than the things we've had in the previous months. But as mentioned, we had multiple people staying with us. It's also Christmas, so there was kind of specialty foods bought in association with that, that kind of thing. So I'm hoping that that total will be lower in future months. The next category, home and household, came in at about $240, which is lower than November and significantly lower than October. In October we bought a new bed though, so that's kind of expected. We didn't have a lot of home decor kind of stuff that we were purchasing. We bought a couple things for the garden, a couple things for like Christmas decoration kind of stuff, but nothing too major there. The next category was fuel, which I can completely understand why that one went up a bit, and that's because we were doing a lot of trips between here and town, which is a bit of a longer drive compared to just around our area, so more driving means more fuel. Our fourth category though is expected bills, which came in at about 4,830ish, so actually the lowest amount that we have recorded so far, which is kind of nice. <laughs> expected bills includes things like loan repayments, power, internet, that kind of stuff. For unexpected bills, it only says $3.95, but we could probably also include a cost that we have in transport, which was $208, in part because we got a flat tire, because there was a giant nail on the road, and so that was kind of an unexpected bill, but I put it into transport because that's where we put other car maintenance kind of stuff. So a nice low unexpected bill, but then a not so low transport cost. The transport cost compared to October though, very different because in October we did a whole bunch of car maintenance kind of stuff, which was quite expensive. But I'm hoping that in January we won't have too much in the way of transport costs. I know we do have a service booked though, so hopefully outside of that we won't have too many other expenses in that area. For personal and well-being, this one kind of shot up a bit compared to November, but that's because we had things like a doctor's appointment, we ran low on shampoo and things like that which we needed to buy, and I buy them in bulk. So it's not necessarily unexpected that that one was a little bit higher than the last month, but it wasn't as high as October, so there is that. For our food out category, that one did increase again, we had a few more meals out. Plus towards the end of the year where you're just kind of getting a little bit lazy, don't really want to kind of do dishes and all of that kind of stuff, we did have a bit more takeout then, so it's not unexpected that, that increased. I am glad to say that it wasn't as high as September or July though, so there was at least that. I'm expecting though in January, because we're trying to be a little bit more money conscious, we probably won't have as high an amount in that area. Fingers crossed. <laughs> For entertainment, this one was a decent amount lower than November, so coming in at $250 roughly. This included things like buying some board games, buying some experience tickets, that kind of stuff, so just fun things. Transport we already looked at, but travel went up to $720, and that's because we bought some flight tickets, so 
that one charge was just for that. And then we get to gifts, and I know I had said that I wanted to spend less on gifts in December because I had already kind of bought what I thought was the majority of my gifts in November. Didn't really turn out that way, so we did spend just a little bit more in that category compared to November. So coming in at about $445-ish. But I do expect that cost to be significantly lower in January because I'm only planning on buying one gift because it's my mom's birthday. Surprisingly though, December was actually our lowest spending month out of the ones we have tracked here, which I was not in any way expecting because I kind of felt like I got a little loose with my spending in December, but I am hoping again that in January we can just tighten it up a little bit more in some areas in particular. We'll have to wait and see how January turns out. The next part of my reset process was to populate my planners. So this included my yearly collections bullet journal and my everyday bullet journal. Normally I would include that in this video as well, but as this was the population of a new journal for a new year, it of course deserved its own video. That one's already up on the channel and is also linked in the description box. It's time for Jess and Vogel's decluttering checklist! But yeah, we're gonna work through the spaces in our house in this order. Notably, our offices are our own spaces, so we won't do those together. The first place we're gonna be starting our declutter is the bedroom, because it's in theory the easiest. Realistically, it's just clothes, bedding, and some other stuff. We're going to be doing our decluttering by area rather than by category. So not kind of like KonMari style where you do like all of the clothes and then all of the books and the whole of the house. We're just going to go by room because it's just going to be more straightforward. We've both done our KonMari before, like fully and properly and getting everything out and stuff like that. So this is going to have like elements of that, but it's not going to be quite as hardcore. <laughs> Still a little hardcore though, because I really like decluttering. <laughs> the decluttering stage of my yearly reset is probably one of my most favorite things because I feel like it's the most impactful part of the reset. Considering that the main purpose of the yearly reset is to get that clean slate or fresh feeling for the new year, decluttering is very much one of those tasks that helps me achieve this. So going through all of my spaces, making sure I'm pulling all of the stuff out, considering do I actually want to keep this? Does this add value? Does this spark joy? Although we certainly did not get rid of as much stuff as we have previously, it still just feels good to get those things out of your space. Considering we're starting in the bedroom, the things that we're mainly looking here, as mentioned, are clothes, bedding, also towels, because this is where we keep our towels for our upstairs bathrooms. I'm asking myself questions like, does this actually fit me? Do I look good in this? Am I comfortable in this piece of clothing? For example, I know that I don't really wear colors that aren't black or darker colors. So things like my pale pink jumper, which while very soft and very comfy, I don't gravitate towards those. I also don't like zips, so I don't really know why I kept it as long as I did. The decluttering part in particular is certainly the longest part of the reset because as mentioned, we're just starting in the bedroom. We also have all of the other areas in the house to do as well. As I said at the start, we did not do all of this in one day. In one day, we managed to do our bedroom, the spare bedroom, all of the bathrooms, the whole cupboard and the living area. Our bedroom itself took a little over an hour and that doesn't include the bathroom attached to our bedroom. Vogel, what do we got distracted by? Jess pulled all my coins apart. <laughs> now my fingers smell like money. Mm, money, 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 money. But we've collected our decluttered bedroom stuff in this basket. So like clothes, shoes, suspenders, coat hanger things. That bag is not going, it is just sitting there. And we also have this box of just like rubbish stuff, things that realistically can't be donated or they're crap. So <laughs> they're just gonna go effectively in the bin. I have also decluttered this lamp because Vogel got me a new lamp for my Christmas and it's beautiful. But now it is time for breakfast. After a short interlude, breakfast is done and it is time to do the spare bedroom. We figured we'd do both of the bedrooms at once. There isn't really a lot in the spare bedroom so this shouldn't take very long, but let's go have a look. Duvet, that will stay. Wool quilt, that will stay. Baby tiny quilt wall hanging. This is the oldest thing I've ever seen. Oh, no, that's mum's sewing machine. That has to stay. Okay. We've got a selection of assorted items. More importantly, though, I need to make sure I'm adding to my brain dump so that I know what needs to be done, like hanging the quilts. The thing that really gets me about, like, doing a lot of decluttering at once is that things get dusty and my nose is just like, <laughs> stop it. I need to do things. Cables. Nemesis. I hated it. What are we getting rid of from the cables? Phone and TV. Yeah. Because TV is dead. Netflix killed you. Whoa. Harsh. We're also probably going to get rid of this Ethernet cable, which is from like an old Xbox here. The Xbox 360 is special. Oh, boff. You don't need it. Sad face. 
We decided to keep the Steve with the flat plug though, because these are actually quite handy, because a lot of the time the power point is behind something. Also, I do recognize that this is called a multi-board, but I call it a Steve. For our bathroom declutter though, all the towels can just get put in the bucket because they need to be washed. They're not gonna get decluttered. Quite like our towels. Don't need to see them go. Bathroom drawers are like one of my biggest spaces of just like, to declutter the bathroom, we started by getting everything out of the drawers and putting it on the bed, just making sure we were careful that nothing was open or was going to leak or make a mess effectively. We also got everything off the vanity because those items need decluttering too. Items that were in the shower though, we did not bring into the bedroom because they're from the shower, they're probably wet or waterlogged, so those ones we just decluttered from the shower. It was very much one of those scenarios where you don't necessarily realise how much stuff you have until you pull it out of all of the drawers. So this is our collection of things from the bathroom and Vogel gesturing. Good gesturing, Vogel. Oh my god, it's Dettol. But yes, lots of things to, I don't know, sort through. So best get started. Because we're looking at bathroom things, most of the questions I'm asking myself are stuff like, is this expired? Do I actually wear or use this? If it's a skin product, does it actually feel good on my skin? And throughout this, we were also considering how are we going to store these items? One of the things in particular that I found the hardest to get rid of was makeup palettes. Look at how beautiful this palette is. I like never used it, but it's so pretty and now it has to go in the bin. They're just so pretty and it feels like such a waste because I barely used them, but I kind of should have known that going in because I don't wear makeup. I will say though, even though it was hard to get rid of them, now as they're gone and given the available space in my bathroom drawers, I'm feeling a lot better. You can see that Vogel and I have these white baskets that we're working with. Those were the baskets that were originally in our bottom drawer, but because the edges are so sloped, they're a lot wider at the top than they are at the bottom, this actually led to a lot of wasted space in our drawers. So as said, while we were going through, we were considering how can we store this stuff better? Which of course meant we needed to take a break to go and get containers. Well, we've gotten to a point where we've at least thrown out some things, but we realistically need to find better storage solutions because this basket and that one do not sit in the drawer well. There is so much wasted space. So we're going to measure up the drawer, then we're going to figure out what kind of containers we want, and then we're going to go to Kmart. You're doing a terrible job of this. Would you like a hand? Are you excited? Yeah. Time to go. We need containers. Well, we've got some to choose from. Now it's just finding the right combination of all of the different pieces. A pantry handle? What the heck is that? Compulsory pit stop for lunch. And now we're waiting for Vogel, because he ran off somewhere else. Oh, he's been spotted. Here he's coming. We are back with our containers and ready to tackle all of this. With the new containers in hand, it was time to then put everything into them. The problem is, is that I wasn't too sure what should go into which container. I also didn't know which container was going in which drawer, so the top or the bottom. So outside of the shampoo box, I really think I need to put the containers into the drawers first so I can kind of see what we're working with and then put things into different spaces. Yeah. This strategy worked a lot better because in my mind I had a better grasp on what I wanted in the top drawer versus what I wanted in the bottom drawer, so knowing which storage spaces were available in each location allowed me to place those items. Sadly, not everything would fit into the bathroom drawers. For instance, my hair dryer, which is just kind of an awkward shape, didn't fit in the bottom drawer as I wanted it to. And there certainly wasn't enough room in the top drawer for it once we were done, so that one is just getting stored in our walk-in wardrobe. Realistically, I don't use my hairdryer all that much because I typically only use it when I'm going out somewhere special and I want to do my hair. Most other days I just tie it up in a wet ponytail, so having it in the wardrobe won't be too much of a hassle. I hope. If that doesn't work out, I will probably have to look into getting more storage in my bathroom, maybe in the way of a shelf or something like that. Once we had everything in the drawers though, we then did a clean of the bathroom. I say we, it was Vogel, he did the clean of the bathroom. And you can see our drawers look so much better. This was a space that was giving me a lot of mental unrest. I've been meaning to do a declutter and an organization of the bathroom for ages. So having it done just feels so super good. <laughs> you want me to say something? You can say something if you want. Now if only we could declutter the pain in our feet. Da, da, da. So sore. so sore. After that though, we then moved into the other bathroom spaces, which didn't take anywhere near as long because there is not as much stuff in either of those. 
and after that it was onto the whole cupboard. We actually only have one whole cupboard, so pretty much everything gets dumped in there, whether that be towels for the kitchen, old towels, board games, the vacuum cleaner, effectively just anything that doesn't get stored in the kitchen, bathroom, office, or garage. This cupboard in particular wasn't one that was really high on my priority list, but I know it was high on Vogel's, so he very much took the lead on this one. The storage in this cupboard isn't necessarily ideal, but there's nothing else that we really want to throw out at all, and it doesn't really matter that it's not stored super well. Like, ideally at some point we will have a proper storage system for everything in here, but it isn't really a priority right now, so... While I was quite content with how things were looking in there, Vogel wanted to give it another go over, so just shimmying a couple things around to make things fit just a little bit better. Really, we only ended up decluttering one item, which was an expansion for a game that we already have, and we also moved some towels out of that space and put them up in our bedroom. The next space to declutter is our alcohol cabinet, but I like all my alcohol, so I'm going to keep it. So we're going to tip this gin down the sink. Why are we doing that? Because it's a $12 bottle of gin. Don't buy a $12 bottle of gin, it tastes like shit. And we have nicer gin, so enjoy. <gasps> oh, alcohol, oh, poor teenagers, sad. <laughs> Finishing the alcohol cabinet though means that the living spaces are complete and we can move into the kitchen. The kitchen is always the biggest one, it's the one that's kind of the most multifaceted and just kind of has the most stuff, or at least the most stuff that needs genuine consideration. Because it is such a big project, we did tackle the kitchen in its own day, so we actually finished off our decluttering for the first day at the alcohol cabinet, and the second day of decluttering we started on the kitchen, and only worked on the kitchen. As you can see, the first thing that we're doing is emptying out everything from the pantry, going through all of the food items, and then cleaning them off, putting them back. That's not to say that our pantry is particularly dirty, but it's more just like, you know, when you're putting away sauces and flour and stuff like that. Sometimes small spillages can happen that you might not necessarily realize, so just using this as an opportunity to clean off the shelves as we go. The nice part about starting with food products is that it's fairly easy to know whether you should or shouldn't keep something. We like to use questions like, is this expired? Are we actually using this? But this was also an opportunity to make sure that things were being stored in a way that was reasonable. For instance, making sure that everything at eye level is the stuff that you use the most, or possibly the stuff you don't want to eat more of. I mean, having said that, at eye level we did end up storing all of our snacks, but I'm not too unhappy about that decision. As mentioned, the kitchen is certainly a more involved process, so it does take us a lot longer to do. In part, just because of the volume of stuff, but also we're using it as an opportunity to fill up containers that are getting low, reevaluate our storage systems, making sure things are stored in ways that make sense. For instance, we had a lot of things that realistically should have gone in containers together, so jimmying those things around, and all that other associated stuff. I will say though, even though the pantry and the kitchen in general weren't really high on my priority list, having them finished feels so good. Because we did this process together and I was very much involved, it means I know where everything is in my kitchen now. When we first moved in, Vogel made a lot of the decisions about where things were going, so I kind of still, even a year on, had a bit of trouble knowing where things went but I now have a much better idea of everything we have and where it belongs. Well, we're making progress on the cupboard. We have some storage at the top and we've got everything else in containers. We're thinking we're gonna jimmy a couple of things around because they're not quite where we want them to be. Go get some more containers, that kind of stuff. But now we're working on the tea and oh no, get, get out of the way, you're ruining the shot. Oh my Lord, inanimate objects. But yes, we're working on the tea. We think we're gonna possibly try and store it in this little cupboard here, because that used to be where food was, but it's not really that accessible, at least for me, and Vogel's the one who drinks the tea, so it's like, you know, a nice little corner cupboard for him, but we'll see. This is the box of stuff that is going to be departing, that needs to be like opened, cleaned out, and recycled, that kind of thing. But there's still plenty to do. Oh my god, guys, we've literally only done a pantry, <laughs> and it's well, like five parcel two. <laughs> there's a clock like right there in the shot too. Oh yeah, you guys know. <laughs> We did end up going back to Kmart to get some more containers for the pantry, in particular the very top shelf which is not super accessible when you're my height, so we got a container that has wheels and a drawer so I could very easily pull it out, which was nice. Now though, as you can see, we're moving on to our second food storage area, which is the refrigerator, and I'm super glad that we did a clean out of the refrigerator because in particular where the milk gets stored just gets scoty. Like, you know, when milk drips down the side of the carton and then it kind of hardens onto the place that the milk's being stored. I know that sounds super gross and it's not even a big amount of milk, but it's enough that makes it not pleasant. 
So taking this as an opportunity to fully clean out the fridge, pull out the drawers that are removable, wipe down the shelves, just give everything a freshen up. This is an area in particular that didn't have a lot of stuff to declutter from it. We didn't have anything that was really expired or things that we weren't really using. But again, it was just nice to get a feel for everything that was actually in there. The way that I tackle the fridge is usually a little bit different to the way I tackle the pantry, just because I don't really like to stand there with the fridge door open for long periods of time. The fridge starts to get angry and it beeps at you. So while we do pull everything out at the start, after this I just very quickly clean the fridge and then put everything back. It doesn't necessarily go back in the highly organized order that I try for when I'm doing the pantry. But once I know everything in the fridge is stuff that we're actually keeping, because while I'm putting it back I'm doing things like checking expiration dates, all of that kind of stuff, then I know how much I need to store in the fridge. And then from that I can consider how do I want to store these things. The freezer is done in essentially a similar way, I just don't want things to start heating up or defrosting or whatever. So it's very quickly pull it out, give things a clean, and put them back. The freezer was another space that we really didn't have a lot to get rid of. But it was nice to evaluate our storage in that so that we actually have like items together. I didn't quite realize how many frozen chicken thighs and breasts we had, so I'm glad that we did this. After the food spaces of the pantry, fridge, and freezer, it's then time to get into other areas of the kitchen. One in particular that I know was important to Vogel was our cup drawer, because we actually had too many cups and mugs to fit in the drawer. This one though we did end up decluttering about six items from, and that was really all it needed to get everything else to fit back in there. The questions that we were asking ourselves when we were decluttering that space in particular was, do we enjoy using these mugs? Which mugs do we actually gravitate towards? I know for me, I have two mugs in particular that are my very most favorites, so outside of those, I didn't really care so much about what other mugs we kept. Same idea goes with glasses. Sadly, Vogel and I have different opinions on the glasses. The ones that I like are the ones he doesn't really like and vice versa. But with decluttering those mugs that I talked about before, we had enough space for all of the things we wanted to keep. We've effectively got to that point in the kitchen where we're not so much decluttering anymore, but more so just organizing stuff. So figuring out what needs to go where so that our kitchen is a more usable, livable kind of space. The storage in the cupboard and drawers we have here was not being well utilized, so getting everything out, thinking about what makes sense where, was certainly a very valuable process. We wanted to make sure we were doing things like having like items together, so for instance having all of our glassware that isn't regular glasses all in the same place, having all of our oven trays together, that kind of thing. By this point though, Vogel and I were getting kind of over standing up and we really needed to take a break. So we probably didn't do as thorough a job as we could have done, but I'm still pleased with what we did get accomplished. We do still technically have to do the garage, but we've decided that is a future us problem. We're going to do it next week because we're kind of both feeling a little bit, not necessarily burnt out with the decluttering, but we've gotten to a natural stopping point for the stuff that's in the house and leaving the garage to next year seems fine. I love the idea of saying leaving it till next year, which really means like Monday, but. For now though, it's time to think about my office. Oh god, everything in here is just making me so stressed out. Every single corner is a mess. The first thing I had to start with was the boxes because they were just taking up so much space. Of course, with it being around Christmas time, having a lot of packages being delivered, that kind of stuff, the box issue got way out of hand. So even just getting them out of the office, like flat pack them down, put them in the recycling, made such a huge difference. An issue that I've noticed is that I find it really hard to let go of boxes that I think are useful, especially if the boxes are kind of pretty. You know, these brown ones that I'm breaking apart here, not so much an issue for those, unless they're a particularly good size, but the ones that are very nice, the ones that have a pretty color say, the ones maybe from Archer and Olive, those ones I have a harder time letting go of. End of an era team, time to say goodbye to these boxes. Although it was hard to do at the time, I will say that freeing up some space in my office has made me much more happier than keeping the boxes probably ever would have. It was one of those things that they were literally just sitting in the corner and I would use them to do a size comparison for any, you know, Archer and Olive sub box unboxings, but because I'm not part of the design team anymore and getting the box sent to New Zealand is very expensive, I'm not getting those anymore, so it didn't really seem necessary to hold on to them. As said, very much an end of an era, but I'm not sad now that they're gone. One of the things that I find really hard about tidying my office, especially with it being in the current kind of state you can see it here, is that I don't have enough storage for all the stuff I have. 
I've got my desks, obviously, and I've got some storage on the desk in the form of little acrylic drawers. And I've got the art cart. And at this point in time, I also had a bookcase in the cupboard that you can see me going towards on the left every so often. But I just don't have adequate storage for things like my washi tapes or my papers or any other real kind of collection of supplies that doesn't fit into those aforementioned spaces. This means that a lot of my tidying just ends up being putting things in boxes and piling them into corners, which isn't really ideal. At this point, I've pretty much decided that I need to do some decluttering in my office before I go much further with the actual tidying process, putting things away. But as said, I don't really have great storage options in my office. So I did start the decluttering. I got rid of a couple of items, but then life got in the way. We needed to leave the office project for a while and come back to it later. You know, at the start of the video where we said we were gonna do this in parts and I was just gonna stitch it together so that they were in a kind of semi-ordered state. Yeah, well, my office is a mess again because it's been some time since I filmed the last clips, so let's clean it again! <laughs> By this point, I had managed to accumulate more cardboard boxes. I also decided to get rid of all of the other Archer and Olive boxes that I was hoarding, in particular the ones that come with the notebooks inside of them. Realistically, I don't need them. They've just been sitting in the closet. It's not like I ever put them back in the boxes or have them on display or anything, so they can go to a new home. In particular, I donate them to Rachel's early childhood center because her kids use them for painting. While I was doing this tidy up of my office though, I recognized that doing a declutter of my office is a much more involved job than what is suitable for the yearly reset. I was very much sick of having everything on the floor though, so I decided that anything that was going to be staying, or essentially anything that I need to go through properly and decide if I'm gonna keep, could get stacked on my I'm gonna call it a spare desk. It's not a spare desk. It's usually the desk that Rachel uses when she comes over or the desk that I use for face forward filming. But all of those items that don't really have a home yet were getting stacked on that desk on the right. This means that I have much more floor space to actually move around and do things. And I've got all of the items in one place so I know what needs to be looked at. So everything up here is stuff that in theory belongs in the office, but doesn't actually have a home that isn't the floor or the desk right now, which is just not ideal. Realistically, it all kind of needs to be decluttered properly and then put away into new homes. But for instance, stuff in the middle here, a whole bunch of that is filming setup stuff and I need to set up the filming stuff so I can get rid of the boxes. So they're all just kind of sitting there at the moment. This tub is for like paper supplies, that tub is for washi tape. So they both need a really good go through, but I literally cannot even today. <laughs> It's one of those jobs that's just a little bit too big for the yearly reset, so we put it onto our to-do list, schedule time to do it, so it gets done properly, not like a half-assed attempt during the yearly reset. The stuff down here though is all either recycling or things to go out, or stuff that just doesn't belong in this office. So for instance, the beautiful biscuit book was a lovely gift from my mom, but it doesn't belong in the office. You'll note that the washi box is actually down there and going out. I just need to find somebody to take it off my hands. Which actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. I literally put a post up in my community group and somebody claimed it within like three minutes. For the rest of my office supplies though, I now have some shelves for them to live on, but that's not a yearly reset task. That's an office organization task which is going to be a separate video. If you enjoyed our yearly reset though, then you'll probably enjoy the monthly resets too. Those ones are in the playlist at the top. Or if you were looking for more longer videos from me for like body doubling and such, the playlist at the bottom is where it's at. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.